Hi folks, this is Pugal from Rocket Reality. In today's Rocket Reality radio show, I wanted to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on landlords and tenants. So let's get started. You know, I have received a number of phone calls uh, from landlords as well as tenant who are dealing with COVID-19 situation. And uh, there are a lot of questions that I wanted to summarize and I wanted to share those top five questions under COVID-19. Okay. Before I uh, present this information, I want to make a disclaimer. You know, if you have used the standard uh, Texas Association of Realtors residential lease agreement, my explanation are relevant. If you have used any kind of specific uh, lease agreement, then you might want to consult an attorney. Okay. With that disclaimer, let's start with question number one. Can the rent not be paid? You know, uh, if you have used the standard lease agreement, the answer is no. The, ten the tenant is obligated to pay the rent. And as a landlord, you have uh, the right to expect them to pay the rent. Okay. Uh, question number two. If the tenant is unable to pay the rent, what are the options? You know, we live in a very different scenario, right? So if the tenant is having difficulty paying the rent, then you can work with the tenant to have a payment plan where part of the payment is uh, done within the first half of the month and the second part of the payment is done the second half of the month. Uh, Texas Association of Realtors have released a form for lease payment option. So you can work with your real estate agent to take care of these different payment plans. Now, third question is related to evictions. Can a landlord evict a tenant for not paying rent? Okay, or any breach of the contract. Now that comes into four um, governmental uh, laws that have been enacted for COVID-19. At the national level, the CARES Act influences that decision. At the state level, Supreme Court has passed some laws uh, that restricts evictions at the county level and the city level. So you need to check on those four levels, but let me give you at the federal level and the national level, okay? Uh, federal and the state level. Now, the Texas Supreme Court has paused uh, accepting any eviction filing until April 19. Of course, there are some exceptions. For example, if the tenant is has engaged in a criminal act Activity or is a physical harm, then you can they still accept. But for normal breach of contract, no uh, no uh, eviction filings are accepted at any court level until April 19th. Uh, that is a Texas Supreme Court order. Now coming to the federal level, federal government passed a law called CARES Act. Okay. Uh, that limits certain residential properties and their owners from filing eviction from March 27th to July 24th. You know, what are those certain residential properties? Um, an example is if the federal government is paying the rent on behalf of the tenant through a federal housing program, then as a landlord, you cannot evict between these two time periods. If you have a specific scenario or a specific situation, I recommend that you consult an attorney. Now, how about late fees? Once again, the late fees affects, you know, is, is, uh, is allowed except for certain residential properties where the federal government is paying the landlord. So you cannot assess late, late fees for those properties where you're accepting, where the federal government is paying the rent on behalf of the landlord between March 27th and July 24th. This is a very common question. Uh, under the circumstances, it is very understandable. Can a tenant refuse access to the property? The answer is no. Um, as a landlord, if you have used the Texas Standard Lease Agreement, um, you have to make a reasonable attempt to first reach out to the tenant to access the property. If the tenant is re not responding, then you can access the property at a reasonable time. That said, there may be a tenant situation where they may have occupants who may have low immunity and they are very scared 
of allowing people inside the property okay so the situation where the landlord may need access it could be for a maintenance to send somebody as your representative to fix certain things or the tenant has given a move out notice on may 15th and you wanted to put your home in the market and a prospective tenant wants to see the property right in those scenarios folks you need to talk with your tenant and if the tenant is concerned about the disease being the virus being carried and spread then the texas association of realtors have a certified form which, which, which will be signed by the prospective visitor to the property and signed by the tenant so you do a lot of due diligence in allowing people to access the property again reach out to your uh, real estate agent because those forms are developed and available for real estate agents use and it is all developed by lawyers uh, within Texas Association of Realtors. All right. So again, folks, I wanted to discuss the top five questions that I have came across. Um, if you have any doubts or any question, I recommend that you consult an attorney. OK, next week, I plan to talk a very important topic, buying a home, how to get started. If you like my show, please like me on Facebook forward slash Rocket Realty TX or subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is tinyurl.com forward slash Pugal. Until next week, have a great week and a great weekend.